Welcome back everyone, with a beautiful day here at the land as you can see. So last week I talked through making some changes to the uh, to the fire trailer and uh, where I ended that is I needed to get some extra parts for, for that so I've done that, let's go and have a look and uh, get ready to make some more changes. So that was the one that I took. Took that as a as an example. But uh, yeah, I went to went to my local local hardware place. And, uh, managed to get hold of so I got a hold of the inch and a half flexi pipe. It's actually a suction pipe, but the ribs in that give it uh, give it a bit of rigidity whilst it's still flexible. We had a couple of items that were uh, that were ordered. I ordered a little bit more than uh, than I actually needed for this job, just for for the future. Okay, so. Yeah, it's worth knowing. I got these yeah, Rainmaker Bush Bushfire Sprinklers, got them from that company. Um Evolve they're called Evolve Evolve Fire Systems. So as you say, that's for one end of the pipe, that's for the other end of the pipe. And then they We'll connect on to here. So in last last week's video, in last week's video, you saw me connect all of this up, put the uh, put the thread sealant on. So today's job is going to be connecting those fittings to that pipe. I'll show you how I do that, and then welding the brackets in place on the trailer. The welding the brackets onto here. And, um, and connecting it all together and then we'll give it a test. So in the container I've just got uh, a pot of water on the go. So I'm warming, warming that water up. So what I do... So what I do is get a pot of water, warm it up really hot like boiling put the end section in and then uh, then push these fittings in I find it goes in a, a lot easier if you do it that way and if you spray a tiny bit of WD-40 onto onto here as well it really helps get the fittings in quite easily the other thing that I did buy yeah some stainless steel um, stainless steel clamps so I'll fit those on as well once I uh, once I get these two fitted and that, that kettle's boiled. Okay, so. In. Just a quick spray of WD. Let's set that up somewhere flat. It's starting to soften now. Oh, 
that and then squeeze it down. Is that one done? Dead easy if you put a bit of hot water on. If you don't put the hot water on, you have to use a lot of muscle. On and I can spin and clamp all the way to the other end. Soften now, it's good. Screwdriver and tighten those up. There's two, two fittings clamped on nice and tight. The end of the, end of the female part there is, is this far down. That's on nice and tight. So let's, uh, let's carry on. So I've done a test fit of the, of the fire hose or the fire hose reel. And that's where the bracket needs to sit. So I'm going to put the first bracket on, tack weld that in place and then put the fire hose back on and then position the second bracket and then I'll come back and fully weld both of them. I've got the welding gear ready. Just need to fire up the generator and uh, we'll get started on tack welding.
all. We're fully welded now. So that'll certainly hold. So I do need to just do a little repair on the brackets. I think last week when I was leaning on them, yeah, I ended up uh, bending them a little bit, so I'll just get the yeah, get a pair of pliers on there and just, just bend them back and then we'll fix this in place. Okay, so we're fixed in place. Next activity, connecting up the hose and uh, bringing the hose around, around to the front. here if I ever need it for anything. So let's now reel up the, the fire hose and uh, we will set ourselves up for doing a test run. mistake there where I've missed, missed putting the, the hose back in the winder feeder.
to wind this on the first time I'll make, to make it as neat as I can. So that's the fire holes reeled in. Both sides now. Um, as you see what I did do on this one was put a put a sort of strap on it to stop it unwinding as I drive. So I may have to do the same thing with this one, otherwise yeah this is gonna spin spin as I drive. So let's um hook the fire pump up and then with the fire pump I'll then connect all the hoses and before I get it running I'll, I'll sort of talk through the, the process and, and uh, how it actually works. So this is the fire pump I use, it's a Fire Industry Supplies MSH200, there are plenty of other videos that I've put together on this one. Um, from the first test through to doing a strip down and rebuild when I had a water leak in here. As you can see I welded brackets onto this trailer previously. And it's designed so that those two go together. I've connected the pipe. So once that's connected, connected, obviously that is the inlet to the pump. So I'll shut this for now because we're gonna, I'm gonna go fill this water tank up in a second. So the idea being water comes out the tank through the inlet into the impeller which because of the, uh, the water pressure in the tank and the head it automatically primes the pump and then what I have is three outputs. this side one on that side leads through to that fire hose the new one that we've, we've just installed just do a bit of a wrap on this to stop it dragging on the floor All of these have got on and off valves. So the one on the top, well, you'll see, also has a quick connect. So two things I can do with this. I can actually put a quick connect on there that is actually a sprinkler head, which actually keeps this whole area cool and then um, gets a mist of water spraying up into the air to cool cool the pump and cool the surrounding area in case of a fire. The other thing that I can do is I have a hose that connects to it.
this inch hose I can do one of a few things I can feed it straight back into here and if you was in a firefighting situation you could actually have that hose recirculating water so rather than having the pump on full power or a tick over with no water going through it and the whole thing's heating up you could have the pump on tick over with water flowing through here up and out and straight back into the tank whilst these lines are actually primed and ready to use when you need to So the other thing that I can do with this is where we have these hoses connected to the fire put to the fire hose on either side, disconnect. Going on top of the tank. If I needed to. I was running out of water in this tank and didn't have another way of getting water to it. I can use this suction hose, pull the pump away slightly and connect the suction hose in here and then use the pump to suck water out of the dam and feed it back into the tank and quickly fill it. And as you can see there with this setup I'd have an inch hose and an inch and a half so I'd have two and a half inches two and a half in inches of hose feeding back into the water tank and it would quickly fill up. Okay let's take it uh, take it down closer to one of the tanks and I'll, uh, I'll get the hose pipe in and get some water in there and then we'll give it a test and see see if we've got any leaks in this this new unit that I, that I bought and then um, we'll test out the, uh, the whole setup. So we'll leave this going, give it half an hour to put a, put a couple hundred litres of water in and, uh, and we'll, we'll see what it looks like. So we've got water in there now, we've got oh no, just, just short of half a tank. So what I'm going to do now, obviously it'll get noisy when I turn the pump on, so I'll talk it through before I actually start. So you'll see me turn this on and allow the water to flow into the impeller. I'll then start the pump. Once I've got the pump started, I'll then check that it's fully primed by opening this valve and seeing water flowing back into the tank. Once that's uh, functioning, I'm happy with that, I'll open one valve at a time on either side. I'll open one on the left first and go around and just check for any leaks in the new pipework that we've uh, that I've connected together. And then I'll open the other side and then I'll go around the front and we'll grab one of the hose pipes and uh, open the valve and see what sort of flow and pressure we've got and then I'll get the other one operating. So we'll end up with both of them operating at once. Okay, let's make a start on that.
saw there, good, good distance, good water pressure from, from this hose. This one was fine when I was having it on the, the jet to fire at a distance, but um, yeah, when I had it on the one that, that gives you a, a wide spray, uh, practically no pressure in there. As you've just seen earlier, the, the pump, the leak that I've had in the past seemed to be an awful lot worse. So uh, listen, with fire season approaching, it's good to do these sort of tests. So I think that's a, it's a case of now I'm going to have to have a, another look at that pump and see if I can fix that. Because it definitely used to have a, a lot more pressure than that. It's something not quite right. Anyway, as far as today's project goes... As far as today's project goes, to, uh, to fit a secondary hose pipe onto the... Uh, to the fire trailer. We say that success, project completed. As usual, one project then starts another one. So now you yeah, need to have a look. As you can see, I can still see water flowing out of there. Need to now have a look and find out how I can permanently fix that. You'll see in one of my other videos I've taken this apart. There was a really small leak there. And when I took it apart, I realised to actually swap the seal out in that area was a really big job. So I ended up putting it back together again, and um, it's run for a while with just a small, yeah, small water leak. But that's definitely got a lot worse. So I may need to uh, yeah, do another investigation and see if I can fix it. But we'll call this project complete, and uh, know that it starts another one. <laughs> 